Hello and welcome to this video on monetary policy, in particular reserve ratios. So in this video we're going to look at what is meant by a reserve ratio, how changing the reserve ratio affects AD, and then evaluate the use of the reserve ratio. So first of all, let's have a look again at how a bank operates. So effectively what a bank does is it takes deposits from households and firms, individuals and operating within the economy, and effectively then loans that money out to businesses and households. Now we also want to be able to go to our bank and withdraw money. So the bank can't lend out all the deposits it keeps or receives in terms of loans and households. It must keep some money within the bank. On this diagram indicated by the liquid assets and the shareholder capital. Essentially the reserve ratio is the proportion of all the deposits that the bank has to keep within the bank so that people can make uh, or be confident that they can make withdrawals. So the reserve ratio or the reserve requirement is a central bank regulation that sets the minimum proportion of customer deposits and notes that each commercial bank must hold as reserves. So of all the money they receive from depositors, from households and firms, the central bank, so the Bank of England or ECB or Federal Reserve in America, would set a ratio, a percentage, saying that amount has to stay within the bank, you can't lend that out. So for example, in the Eurozone, it's 1%. In the United States, it's 10%. In the UK, there's no set limit, but there are some requirements that UK banks need to meet. Those requirements are called capital requirements, and these apply to the UK and also to some other countries. So the capital requirement is the amount of capital a bank or other financial institution has to hold as required by its financial regulator. So this can also be the money not just depositors' money, but also the shareholders' capital within the, within the bank itself. So the owners of the bank can also use their capital to meet this requirement. For example, in banks, you know, UK banks must have equity, must have shareholders' capital, shareholders' funds within the business, equal to 8% of all the debts that they've loaned out, or the debts that they hold. Let's go back now to reserve ratio. So the proportion of depositors' money that banks must keep and not lend out. So we can see there's quite a range of values. In some countries, there's no real reserve requirement. All the way up to some countries where you know, over a quarter of all the money that banks receive, they can't lend out, they have to keep within the, within the bank. But you can see the broad range here is somewhere between well, zero and about 20. So what's the impact of changing the reserve ratio? Well, if we decrease the reserve ratio, so banks have to hold less of depositors' money and notes in their vaults or within, the, within their businesses, then they can lend out more. And so this will lead to more investment, more borrowing, more consumption, we call this expansionary monetary policy. Increasing the reserve ratio will have the opposite effect. Banks have to hold more of the depositors' money in the bank and can't lend out as much. So this would mean less borrowing, so less investment, less consumption, and would be contractionary monetary policy. How would we do a diagram to illustrate this? Well, we imagine here we have an economy operating at P1, Y1, a low level of inflation and a low level of economic growth. And so we want to stimulate demand in this economy. What would we do? That's right, we would reduce the reserve ratio. This would lead to an increase in consumption investment, moving our price level back towards target and increasing the rate of economic growth. Now let's try and evaluate the use of the reserve ratio. Well, reducing the reserve ratio doesn't necessarily lead to more lending by banks if they lack confidence in the economy or if they've made losses previously. Reducing the, rate, the ratio may also make bank insolvency more likely and increase the chances of the bank running out of cash because they're holding less, maybe only 
And so when people ask the positives after their money back, it's maybe not there. And so there's maybe more risk of insolvency. Raising the ratio, however, can cause liquidity issues for the banks, reducing confidence in the financial sector and perhaps even risking a run on the bank. So both raising the ratio and reducing the ratio can lead to problems. So in this video, we've looked at what is meant by the reserve ratio, how changes in the reserve ratio could affect demand, and we've evaluated the use of the reserve ratio. That's it. Thank you very much for listening.